Hello, my name is Chip O'Brien, and for my Literacy Center, I decided to choose the book, If You Give a Moose a Muffin by Laura Numeroff. After reading through the entire book, I would have my students do something similar and replicate the modeled writing from the book. So the type of writing that we see in this book is a situational type of writing. A situational type of writing is very formational for multiple types of stories. So basic stories like this, like if I give a moose a muffin, then who wants some jam to go with it, can also be applied to later units like fairy tales, writing about the time that you went to go see your grandma, or just the single gift that you got on a Christmas morning. So, in order to do this, I will give my students a few pages of computer paper. Their computer paper will be blank. Yet, on the first page, they will have the prompt of, if you give a blank, and their first blank would be their animal, a blank being their item, then they will blank. You write your first situation. So before I can give, or after I give out all the materials, I would explain that their task is they're going to be making an eight page book. So their first book will have that prompt that I just explained. And then the last page will have, you will give the certain animal a item from the first page. So, Groups will be split up into groups of four, and the team must work together to come up with an animal, the thing that the animal is given, and an original situation. Then they must carry that situation out among six pages and somehow tie it back to their original page. Why I decided to choose this activity is it is a fun way for students to engage in situational type of learning, they're also doing problem solving, but they are also learning sequence and sequential orders of things. So if I give a moose a muffin, then he'll want some jam. If he gets some jam, then he'll want this. So problem solving, responding to situations, and putting things in order. So once I pass out the pages, I would also be passing out crayons for my students to illustrate. So each of them would get together, start formulating their books, and as they're formulating their books, myself as the teacher would be going around, seeing if there's any questions that students might have, seeing if there's anything that students might want. Um, some clarification on. Also, I would show them um, pages of the sample book that I've made here if they have any questions. So I took my own story, and said, if you give a monkey a vacation. So students would be able to pick this up, see different um, ideas in this story, and get a little bit of inspiration. But overall, I would let their creative juices flow, let them be as creative as they want to find a way to interpret the story. Through this, they will learn sentence structure, they will learn how to sequence different things. They will learn, again, how to problem solve. But overall, it's word, sentence, word structure, sentence structure, and a situational style of writing. So you may be asking yourself how I would assess the kids on this. Well, a form of assessment through this activity would be the process of the kids writing the book originally, and I'm not necessarily going, I wouldn't necessarily set this um, activity up to almost be like a pass fail, like great, you created a story, you get an A. No, this would really be an activity that would be a learning process for everybody. So if I see some str kids struggling with putting stuff in order, pages aren't written right, there's spelling errors, then I would provide supplemental materials to really work on that situational style of learning. 
So kids might be sent home with some additional work for their groups, or we would use additional books in the If You Give series to go over these situations again and replicate very similar activities to this one. So you might also be asking, what type of intelligences can this really play into? The different types of intelligences that this really plays into would include verbal, linguistic, and interpersonal because they're working in groups figuring out how to write the story. Linguistics, they're actually figuring out sentence structure, words, how to put words together, how to formulate those sentences. But overall, this lesson is very logically based. So students have to think, what could logically make sense if I give this animal one thing, how might they respond? What might be something? Yes, these are make-believe stories. None of this would normally happen, but they have to think of problem solving, have that thought process of if this thing happens, then this thing might have to happen afterwards. So overall, just really getting them to think work collaboratively, and find a way to write an interesting and compelling story. Once they do complete that story, however, there is a little bit of a twist. They will not put their story together in a nice booklet like I have. Their pages will be all mixed up. And then they will present the story to another group, and the next group's task for another form of assessment is going to be putting the story in order. So not only did one group write a story and have to think about sequencing, but the other group will have to think of another way of sequencing the story that they are given. Once again, practicing that situational learning and sequencing that we see so much in even fairy tales. Like if you think of um, Jack and the Beanstalk, first he has to get the beans, then he had to plant the beans, then he had to go up the beanstalk after that. So overall, I hope you've learned multiple things and could use this lesson in your classroom simply through a book if you give a moose a muffin or other similar books. Thank you.